guys and welcome back to my channel. The topic of today's video is Tana Mojo. Again, I swear I've gone so back and forth on her. Is it a coincidence that she starts drinking again and then all this drama comes out of nowhere? No, but there's more of like a serious discussion to be had. Follow me on Instagram. I love that I just said serious discussion. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok as well. There is a serious discussion to be had with what's happened. So... Tana Mojo and an influencer called Alyssa Violet got in some beef and then Alyssa Violet, this was like a month ago, Alyssa Violet then decided to put up a video a few days ago talking about her side of the story, yeah. In it, she exposed some messages from Tana Mojo regarding creating an own Because if you didn't see my other video, basically Tana Mojo was making fun of Jason Nash as she said, should because he's embarrassing and Alyssa Violet then slut shamed Tana for having an own And then... We haven't even gotten to the video itself. Let's get to the video itself. And then in the video, she goes to talk about how I sell my butt on all First of all, I never have. Second of all, I'm what? gonna now out of spite, okay? I Third think... of all, what the f do you, Where do you get off? Where I... do you get off? Isn't that how a lot of people are making an honest living and how they're supporting their children? you and then tana said we've been at so many parties coked up together where she's been begging me to like on how to make an dance stupid idiot do you know how many times i've been out with Alyssa violet and she's asked me if she should start an only if i can help her because she has no money that's and then you're I gonna heard. come online and shame me that's what i heard you know how many times i've literally the last time i was with her was at bar lease like and she's in jaw swinging asking me about fans you, you wanted to do it. You're just mad because you wouldn't succeed at it because you fucking flopped. Maybe. Alyssa then in her video showed some screenshots of her messages with Tana Mojo. This one is like this. This topic is so icky. These were from Reddit. I saw this post on Reddit. Tana, tell me your thoughts on OnlyFans. Alyssa, there's no amount of money in the world. Tana, ha ha ha. Respect it. Had to ask. Alyssa, why? I was going to pitch you making a bag. How? To make OnlyFans? Yes, yeah, she would make multi-millions, no question, and show nothing. The second I announced that I made an OnlyFans, even if I posted pictures of my dogs, everyone would assume the worst without seeing what I'm posting. Then the people who purchased the thing would feel scammed and start a controversy, can't win. I mean, you could wildly control the narrative, like everyone does it, and people I feel like no longer think it's the worst. They would know you're in your bag. I also truly feel like no one would feel scammed. Everyone does that. As long as you don't overpromise and underdeliver, it could be legit be photos that just don't make it to Instagram. Also, at the end of the day, you have a ton of male followers who are going to sexualize you regardless. Might as well make a killing off of that. Side note as well, on my second only page Tana gone wild I vlog weekly I vlog me drinking being fun and wild people have loved you vlogging so much you could do a weekly 10 minute vlog that you don't even edit and make a minimum five hundred thousand dollars a month off of that then you can promote it like watch my exclusive vlogs you should do that that's wild I'll think about it I'm shook like I'm literally shook is it really 500k we should just make our own app that has exclusive content you can promote it with full honesty I know but I swear to god people make the most on OF and you'll be buying a, like you'll be buying a house and a Lambo after six months. Tana, I don't think you've bought a house yet. What are you saying? Then there's another screenshot of Tana being like starting OnlyFans. We're begging. Alyssa says never. Tana said, I knew it. Damn it, had to try. So those are the screenshots that Alyssa put up from Tana, and it has spun into a huge uh, discussion about digital pimping and online pimping. Out Tana responded to this on her twitter saying basically on coke she was begging me for advice on how to make an whatever and if you look at the text messages tana's first thought uh, tana's first message says tell me your thoughts on hands because tana's insisting that they discussed it at a party beforehand which they could have happened two things could be true but if so why would she need to be told her thoughts on hands in 2023 so only last year when she already know if they discussed it numerous times coked up at parties together plus tana continuously saying oh she keeps asking me coked up on twitter isn't really the win that she thinks it is because guys if you've never done coke let me just tell you you'll, you'll talk about anything it's not really it's not really a good barometer for how one actually feels on a subject if you're discussing something coked up because i don't know how you guys think people talk to each other it is very common for people to egg people on i like doing this in certain communities come on bro come on bro do it do it bro do it bro do it 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 if you're a person who gets overwhelmed with peer pressure 
or feels actually pressured to do something, then I think that's fine as well. But I think it's also nice to be in a hype group. Do it, do it, do it, do it. It's nice to have people hype you up, but you also have to be in a situation where that's okay. Because like, if not, then you're just being peer pressured into something without the intention being there. So I can't tell. Are they mad at Tana for telling this girl, like, come on, come on, make an only F. Do it, do it, do it. Make all F. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And the girl, like, I, I don't understand, like, what's the, mm, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But also, I would just be like, hey, if you bring it up one more time, I'm going to block you. Just like that's what you do with people, like people with certain personalities. You know what I mean? But I don't care very much. I don't care about being like hyped up or even peer pressured. I don't care because I'll just be like, no, nah, I don't want to. And if you pressure me one more time, I'll block you. I withdraw myself. That's the punishment. If you piss me off, I take myself away from you. Don't piss me off. Okay. But also, I like me a hype train, bro. I've done a lot of my greatest adventures with people going, do it, do it, do it, do it. So like, you know, no regrets. But also, hmm, okay, let's see, let's see. You'll talk about anything and you'll think that some ideas are absolutely brilliant whilst you're coked up because that's the nature of the drug. And then, you know, when you sober up, you don't think <laughs> it's a good idea or whatever. So it's not a really good indicator either way. So because of this, and this is the thread that I found initially that came on my Reddit, someone made a thread. Tana dabbling in virtual pimping with Tana's Angels agency, a deep dive, it's not good. So let's just go through some of it and some of the links together because there are articles. On the 4th or the 25th, nope, on the 25th or the 4th, 21, why do Americans do that? Why is it the wrong way around? Anyway, Tana announces she's starting her very own agency called Tana's Angels Agency in collaboration with Unruly Agency. She was and is currently signed to Unruly Agency. OF is specifically mentioned as to why she's creating the agency. People asking me how I make my money on OF. Tana also states introducing TAA is a way for me to give power back to the creators. In a sideman, in a sideman video, sideman, in a sideman video on the 30th of the 7th, 23, she asked another contestant, have you ever thought about doing OnlyFans? I have an agency. Looking to the difference from peer pressure and coercion is peer pressure is like, it depends on how you're viewing it. But I feel like coercion is deep manipulation aimed to like almost gaslight a person into doing something they don't want. And peer pressure is more like all your friends are doing it. So you should do it too. And you don't want to be the one who doesn't do it because that means like you're the party pooper. So you have to have a confidence. Like you have to be able to say, I don't give a f if you're all disappointed in the fact that I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Right. But I feel like coercion is like you're, you know, like Andrew Tate used coercion a lot of the time with the women. Like he would threaten that they would have a bad life or threaten something bad could happen to them. Right. So like coercion feels different. Peer pressure is like all your friends are doing it, but you won't. That's why they say like, would all if you're all your friends jump off a building, would you do it? It's just like, don't give into peer pressure. Now, obviously there's a lot that goes into peer pressure, right? Like some people bully themselves. Actually, I think this, we should talk about the differences too between like the bullying aspect of peer pressure that fought, like goes, you know what I mean? That also follows because I think there's something different there as well. Let's see, peer pressure is a form of convincing and a foreseeing way, but there's still room to reject the uh, the notion. Coercion is a no choice, I think. Yeah, something like that, basically. To recruit some people. Have you ever thought about doing OnlyFans? OnlyFans? Yeah. <laughs> well, I do OnlyFans. Okay. And I have an OnlyFans agency called Tana's Angels Agency. Oh, nice. Cool, cool. And I'm looking to recruit, look to recruit some people. Would you ever <laughs> do it on camera? Then the lawsuits come into it. So I'm going to go through each one by one. This is on the Daily Beast. They promised her online fame. This influencer says they exposed her nudes and threatened her instead. Modern day pimps. Exclusive interview. Unruly agency reps some of the biggest influencers on Instagram and OnlyFans, but content creators are warning others to stay far away and one model is sued in company. With the likes of influencer Tana Mojo, Daisy Keach, Harry, jo Harry Jowsey, the Clermont twins and dozens of others, the Unruly agency seems to be the place that could take an influencer's brand to new heights. But mm -hmm. clients and contractors are warning others. This is why I don't work with others. This is why I don't work with others. It's drama. Oh, wait, Chad is saying violence isn't always required to be coercion. Okay, noted. Look, this is why I don't work with others. It just gets dramatic, you know, no matter what it is. You have to be very careful who you collab with. I mean, look, look at Cody and uh, Noel. Maybe Noel should never have partnered with Cody or maybe it was worth it in the end. I mean, Cody and Noel did make great content together. Let's be real. But also, you know, maybe he wouldn't do it again if given the opportunity or... Maybe it's hard to say because I believe in, you know, redemption and all that stuff. I mean, even Hassan said it with Cody Co and everything like it's bad, but we obviously believe in therapy and restorative justice and we believe people can be better. Like 
God, you like, you know, again, you can't even start to dismantle prison systems if you don't think people can get better. I mean, Jesus, those people aren't there because, you know, I mean, some people are innocent, obviously. Lots of people are innocent. But the people that are guilty aren't just there to rot for the rest of their lives. Like there's a chance they could reform, right? And we want that. We want to give people that chance. But with situations like this, I just feel like they get out of hand when one, you have people just chasing money. Two, they're not serious about business. Like, I've definitely heard stories from cam models and other people say that, you know, you try to get other people involved, you get other people to try to show up, and it's really hard for people to have the same vision of you as you. Even in the realtor shows I watch, it's hard to get people to stay in a business or to make things grow, especially in this market where Gen Z is better served by quitting jobs every year to get higher raises, which I don't blame you, obviously. It's hard to know, like, where am I supposed to be where I feel safe in a place where in America it feels like you're always you against the employer. So I don't know. It's hard to say, but I'm surprised. Uh, I wonder if Tana really needs the money, though. See, that's always my concern. Is Does Tana need the money? Is that why she wants to involve other people in her work? I would just wouldn't do it. But obviously things will happen. Look at Brooke and Tana. They have a podcast together and Brooke had to take a time, so like a, an episode off because she was being canceled. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I always wonder with these things, there is a benefit to collabing. Absolutely. But oof against signing with either of the firms citing sketchy business practices and ruthless cash grab attitudes these guys are basically pimps attorney robert towler tells the daily beast his client filed suit last week against unruly agency and behave agency in los angeles i really hope this all comes out because it's disgusting adds jenny neiman a popular instagram influencer who walked away from the ruly slash behave in april after being sketched out by what she felt was an inappropriate questionnaire and hearing others horror stories i think that any influencer that's with unruly right now needs to separate from them mm. An online security professional specializing in content removal who requested for the Daily Beast to withhold his name because he works with several top unruly clients to take down the leaked content says he has seen it all from working in relation to the firm and would advise anyone to stay far away. He claims the people behind Unruly and Behave are pretty bloodthirsty and money hungry and treat their talent as objects. They most definitely don't have your best interests in mind. There was a 21-year-old client, a model who is identified as Jane Doe. She alleges unruly team members posted an illicit video of her to a public section of her OnlyFans page without permission, rerouted her OnlyFans payment information to its own bank accounts, and posted a private oh. photo of her to another model's page, captioning it, not safe for work. The okay, well, that's not good. That's the See, do it on your own. Guys, the whole perk of OnlyFans and everything is you don't have to work with people. Stop giving your power away to these agencies, like unless you have a very good contract, like hire a lawyer. You know how many people reach out to me? They're like, we want to work with you. No, because when I read like their contracts or I read their stuff, it is they want app not worth it. I'd rather just do it on my own. Thank you. Most traumatizing aspect of this young woman's nearly three month ordeal came when she tried to leave the agency and was allegedly threatened with financial ruin, according to her lawsuit. I don't want any other girl to go through the amount of fear and being so scared. I felt like my life was ruined. When you search on really agency, the first thing you when you threaten people and say, if you don't work with us, your life will get harder. That's not OK. It's not OK. It's about women empowerment, which is nothing that they are about. Daily Beast reached out, didn't receive a response. Launched in 2020 by recent college graduates, Nikki Gathright and Tara Electra, Nick Najad, Unruly. Also, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say this out loud. I don't know why we keep expecting Tana to have good morals or values. Like, I don't know why we keep expecting it. And I think that's probably a part of the problem that I'm having here is like we keep waiting for like, I don't know, it's like expecting Myron or Andrew Tate to have good morals or values. Like, do you expect Sneeko to have good values? Why do you expect Tana to? Like, I just don't get why Tana, and maybe because I don't watch Tana, but I do not know why anyone thinks she's going to have a good relationship with values. I mean, they're good enough, I guess, but not really. I mean, just look at who she hangs out with. Look at her life. Look how it's gone. She's obviously not ready to be like in charge of people. She's obviously doesn't have enough wisdom or discernment to know why these things keep happening with her name in the mud. I just feel like she's not ready to be this. She's only 25. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Just a reminder, Tana is 25 years old. She's a baby. She is a child. She's 25. She's literally 10 years younger than me. And I still feel like, I don't think I'm ready to be like this in charge of people's lives. She's 25. She's a baby. So I don't know why we keep expecting Tana to have these great values or morals when most people don't because they grow up like Tana did. Tana did not have an easy life growing up. It's like we're putting, I don't know, what, like she's obviously forgetting like it's not just about money, Tana. I think she's doing too many money focused things because why would you, why would you do this? 
He has been praised in Forbes for setting the stage for female empowerment. Billing itself as an elite influencer marketing and social media marketing firm promises to help market their clients and, you know, grow their fan bases. Integral to the business plan for Behave and its parent company, Unruly, is OnlyFans. Amid the worldwide pandemic, the subscription-based platform's popularity skyrocketed, becoming a legitimate reliable source of income for several content creators where top earners can make up to six figures a month. I can try not to interrupt myself too much because I would like to conclude and, you know, gather my thoughts, but Tana Major herself has made something like, I think she broke $10 million on OnlyFans, which isn't a fair representation Yes, some people can make a lot of money, but it's a bit like a lottery. I think the vast majority... I mean, I made an easy billion on OnlyFans, so it's doable. Majority. The vast majority of OnlyFans workers tend to not even break minimum wage. The top earners are usually, generally, ones who already had a massive pre-existing fan base. Unruly's reputation is a trap. Explain. <sighs> She's not a baby, though. You think she could grow the values in, like, five years? People die without having a good set of values. People vote for Trump and say they have values. Like, just a reminder, like, your values might exist, but the values are different. She could have values, but they're not yours or mine. People who, who, I don't know if you guys know this, but people who, like, are suicide bombers have values. They just have values that are different. Like, yes, everybody has values. They're just, or no, no values. Some people have no values. Like, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, people have values. They're just different. I'm saying Tana, you, people keep holding Tana to some level of expectation that I just think isn't reasonable. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't think it's reasonable to hold Tana. Like, I don't know. If, I don't know. I think people keep, like, getting disappointed in her when I'm like, nah, sounds about Tana. I feel like it sounds about right. You know? I think maybe that's my issue. It's like, why are people shocked this is happening? Or, like, that Brooke had racist tweets. Like, yeah, I mean, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. I feel like that is the least shocking thing that ever happened, ever. Explains influencer Jenny Neiman, who inked her contract in March. I wanted to work for Unruly because I knew they were working with Tana Mojo and all these big influencers. I was super pumped. I was like, I'm going to be with Unruly. This is awesome. Daily Beast reached out to Mojo via email comment, didn't receive a response. Jane Doe also joined, spurred on by a friend who was working with the company, making significant cash. She was doing really well for herself, Doe tells the Daily Beast. A lot of celebrities that I look up to, they're also in the agency. So I was like, wow, that must be a really good agency. When speaking to someone at Unruly. See, if the agency as an example is like, you have to post once a week, that's really hard on somebody like me. I can't do OnlyFans that consistently. Like I, I do the Amaranth kind of deal where I, I film a certain amount of days a month and then I spread it across the month. Because, like, I literally can't do it every week. It exhausts me. And maybe if I was doing it and just doing that full time, maybe I could do it. But when you're doing a bunch of other things, it's very hard to feel sexy every week. You know, you're like, oh, I'm ready and I'm performing and I'm doing all these things. Like, it's a lot of work. And you're creating stuff and you're editing. Like, I don't just, like, record and post. Like, right? I make, like, little films and I think they're great. But, like, they take time to create. So, again, like, I think – if you're part of an agency that's like you have to post every week and the girls are tired and things – that's what I'm saying. Don't work with people. Do it at your own pace and on your own time. And yes, you will only make as much money as you can. But if you belong to an agency, they're going to make requirements of you. You know? Unruly. Doe later hesitated upon hearing Unruly wanted a 25% of her gross commission from OnlyFans. Especially since – 20 Unruly wanted 25% of her cut gross commission from OnlyFans. Yeah, that sucks because OnlyFans already takes 20%. No, fuck him. Don't work with people, bro. It's how the platform already takes the first 20% of earnings. So you'd only be getting like 55% of your earnings not if you signed it. with them. Doe, who is not a native English speaker, said she had trouble understanding aspects of the contract when it was sent over. Tula, who represents Doe, agreed- I feel like you shouldn't be able to sign something without a lawyer present who signs the paperwork. I do. You want a better society? No one's allowed to sign paperwork unless a legal professional like says, yes, I read this with them. Because this is silly. Like, what are we doing here? It was unusually hard to make sense of the document. For what it's worth, as someone who's trained to read contracts, it was difficult for me. It was contradictory. It didn't make sense. It had all sorts of very peculiar and unlawful provisions, including that she can't sue them for anything ever, something I've never seen. Wow. Doe says her concerns were smoothed over by the team. Tony, one of the guys from Unruly, said to Doe, nothing's set in stone. It's just a contract. They're not unreasonable people. Communication is the key to our relationship. It will be fine. It will be great. But this is when the trouble started. Doe uploaded her content, including videos and photos on a Google Drive account, which was with, shared with members of the firm. They oversaw the posting of the content to her OnlyFans account and were tasked with responding to the hundreds of daily messages from her fans. Unbeknownst to Doe, without her knowledge or consent, unruly slash behave, changed her banking information on OnlyFans, the suit alleges. I had no idea they were going to do that. Instead of Doe's bank account being linked to her OnlyFans profile, money would be sent directly to the company bank, according to the complaint. Defendants used their access to her OnlyFans account to modify her 
of payment settings that, that is that is grimy in it so that all the money miss doe earned on the platform was directly rooted to the defendant's bank accounts instead of continuing to be rooted to miss doe's bank accounts they exercised complete and arbitrary control over how much they kept for themselves as well as when and whether miss doe was paid only his fans account so she could do her own accounting bills like pulling, pulling teeth it was really confusing i tried to do the math on my own i had no idea if i was getting paid the right amount it was really hard to get hold of the accountant person they weren't emailing me back a couple responding a couple of days later and the initial email they sent me wasn't even working she was unhappy with how they were running her account. They were constantly posting content, lowering her prices and bilking, I don't know what that means, milking, bilking fans for cash when they messaged her, she alleged to the Daily Beast. They were sending out pay-per-views every day, sometimes multiple times a day, Doe claimed to the Daily Beast. There was nothing exclusive about it anymore. That's not why I wanted my OnlyFans to be a about. I actually care about the people I chat to. I actually talk to them about their day and their life. But every time they Oh, well, that's silly. No, 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 no. You can't say oh, I'm going to work with an agency, which is about making money. That's what an agency is. And then you say, I really care about my OnlyFans consumers. I talk to them and ask them how their day is going. Well, well, there's your fuck up right there. Make a decision. Are you making money? Or are you building parasocial relationships with your audience? Are you using OnlyFans to make friends? Like, what are you doing with your OnlyFans? It feels like there's a huge miscommunication happening in this story that is throwing everybody off, but I wouldn't trust Tana, and I certainly wouldn't go into business with her. And then more than that, I wouldn't trust any of the men Tana trusts. I think Tana has a horrible judgment of men. And also, I wouldn't trust, I just wouldn't trust any of these people. They're so young. They're literally 25. They don't know shit about life, like in that regard. Like, they know so much, but not like enough to think about these things. Like, these things shouldn't be happening. But also, maybe some of these girls are lying. But I don't know that. I don't think so. I have a feeling it's more like scummy business behavior in my mind. Probably. And also, the agencies suck. They take a huge cut. You don't even know. You don't want to. Look, it's a lot of work to do it yourself. But you're better off. Okay? You are better off. I had to chat with my audience. It was either sexting or unsophisticated. They didn't care about their day. It was just like, do you want to buy something? They were being cash grabbers. They could care less about my account. They could care less about my audience. They just wanted money. Yeah, but I think if you sign up with an agency, you're kind of in it for money. Because why else would you sign up with an agency? The reason you sign up with an agency is because they help you make more money. They make it easier for you. They give you contacts and networking. If you do it on your own, you make less money, but at least you have the dignity of doing it on your own. So... I feel a little confused. Maybe there's a middle ground. Maybe it's like you work for yourself and do it yourself. You work for an agency that respects you or you work for a cash grab community, something like that. But it feels like if you work for an agency, that is the cash grab move, right? Because you want them to help you, which is fine. I'm not shaming that. If you get a good agency, it's probably good. But then they take a huge cut out of your money that you've earned, she also thought that she was going to be signed with Unruh. And these girls already have followings. That's the ironies. Like, these girls already have followings. So... <sighs> which is their... Which manages their bigger influencer accounts, but she was put with Behave instead, despite being told that she was going to be signed with Unruly. The final straw for Doe came on February 2nd when they posted the company team member posted an illicit video of Doe on her OnlyFans main page, which is free and visible to anyone who clicks on her OnlyFans account despite Doe making clear she never wanted any type of nude content there according to the suit. The two minute video showed the model disrobing, exposing her bare breasts and showing Jane Doe fully nude from behind. Her face is visible throughout the video. Doe was in disbelief. I was literally petrified. A video that was only supposed to be for people who had sent me their ID and paid for the joining fee to ever get access to. And there it is on the main feed for everyone to see. Soon enough, the I can see why that's an issue that it's on the main feed when you'd prefer for people to pay for it, is that because she expects there not to be leaks or because that's how the branding is? Yeah, I wouldn't trust somebody with my naked body if I felt very, if I, it would be very like, or even my brand. I wouldn't trust anybody with my YouTube brand. You know how many people, agencies do reach out, right? Like people do reach out to work with you. I just don't wanna trust, it's hard to trust people. Yeah, I don't know. This, this. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like any of this. All of this bubble, I don't like it personally. I'm not a fan. I'm all about independent artists. I mean, gosh, how many times do we have to learn about record deals and musical artists and uh, like these businesses taking advantage of people, you know? The video was leaked to different platforms, including on Reddit forum, according to the suit. 
and she only received a lackluster apology from the company. They didn't get back to me. I sent them a lot of texts. They didn't get back to me until later. I was All I got was, I'm sorry it won't happen again. It's so unprofessional. They have a team of people working for me. How would they mess that up? They also interviewed a content removal specialist who mm-hmm. believes the sizable cut unruly behave takes from its creators. It's unfair the firms are doing the bare minimum to safeguard their clients' content. They don't get their fair share of service at all. They don't protect them. Anyone who ever asked me, do you know any management companies I should work with or to stay away from? Unruly is definitely on the negative list. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah they're taking, what was it, 20%? They're taking 20% and they're going to fuck up. It's not like it's just pictures of people reading a book it's private pictures that they're using only fans as an outlet for because you know they're sex workers and want to be paid for their work if they wanted things out there for everyone to see there's other websites for that so jane doe wants to get out of the contract and the guy that she'd been liaising with turned from nice to nasty mm. saying basically you're not allowed to get out of your contract it has to last a year and you have to make x amount of money Jeez. otherwise they would threaten to financially ruin or sue her, I assume. Jesus. And Tula says, the demand was based on what they projected she would make in the 10 months remaining in her contract, plus legal fees. It was many multitudes of what she made in a month. No- oh my God, she lasted two months before she wanted out. I don't blame her. See, don't sign up with people. I'm telling you, this is the anxiety of signing up with people. She's 21, signed up for a year and lasted two months before she wanted out. And I believe they did threaten her. They probably got pissed that the talent, quote, wanted to walk away, but maybe they should have made it a better place to work, bro. No one has this type of money sitting around. They know how much she made, so I thought it was particularly cruel. Yeah, because they're trapping her because, well, they know they know how much money she's making because all the money is going to their bank accounts. So mm. they've effectively trapped her. That's crazy that the agencies are taking her OnlyFans money and then giving her a payout. That's crazy. That's what Andrew Tate was doing. Andrew Tate was taking their cuts and then paying them an unfair amount because they didn't know how much they were making. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. This is shitty behavior, bro. Doe was sent into panic mode. I was crying for the first three days after I got that letter from them. I didn't know what my options were. I'm 21 years old. The amount of money they demanded from me, I was never going to be able to pay that. Unless she worked consistently on her. Pimping. It's just, like, that's just pimping, is it not? Trapping someone, forcing them to do sex work. Yeah, that's crazy for you to be able to hold somebody in a contract to do, like, sex work specifically and say, like, even if you're uncomfortable and you're miserable, you better pay us the money. Like, no, you shouldn't be, you should, you got to work the contracts differently. You have to take into account the models might not be able to perform and you cannot hold that against them. Like, the models won't get paid out, but you can't, like, this is, this is not okay. Like, for any work, by the way, things happen. Real life happens. Ugh, don't work with people. Unless I have a different definition of what pimping means. Jane Doe dropped out of college because she couldn't do school and deal with this at the same time. I'm really scared. I don't know how this is going to turn out. How do you go against such a huge company when you search their name it's all positive press and some of the biggest people in the industry are signed with them? Tola says that he was shocked by the contract and it was absurd. There's a provision where they're allowed to take a life insurance policy out on her. What? I've never seen it in my life. All these pieces what? add up to something devilish. What? Take out a life insurance policy what? so they can kill her if she doesn't do the work. What? 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 They can take out a life insurance policy on her? What? I have never heard that. Have you guys heard that before? I have never heard that. What does that even mean? I get the money that way. It's weird. It's not weird. That's beyond weird, actually, isn't it? Weird's not quite the word for that. Tola says, there is a great allure for young women to join an agency with some notoriety. To say it as bluntly as possible, this is dangerous. Not even proceed with caution. This is a dangerous situation that you may end up in and it can really hurt you. So that was the first article. Sorry if it took ages for me to get through that. Okay, I can't do the one on the Business Insider because they want one pound a month from me. Absolutely not. Uh, editor is smart. Feel free to pause to read a top agency for OnlyFans influencers has been hit with a nine lawsuit. Nine lawsuits from former staffers with allegations ranging from false imprisonment to retaliation. Nine former staffers are suing the social media management company company Unruly Agency. The lawsuits contain allegations for wrongful termination, termination and wrong or unjust imprisonment. Sorry. And Ruli's lawyer said the claims have been meticulously reviewed and found to be without merit. Oh, shit, bro. Uh, It says, let's see, hold on. Bro. Okay, the new lawsuits include allegations that unruly executives demoted a staffer uh, after they had made complaints about working conditions and that unruly threatened to freeze two staffers' bank bank accounts. See, that's the bullshit. Nobody holds my money, okay? Most of the new filings are seeking unpaid wages, unpaid commissions, and various legal fees. Here's a summary of what the 
Former unruly staffers are alleging in the nine lawsuits from this year, wrongful termination. All the lawsuits allege employees were wrongfully terminated. The lawsuit says staffers were dismissed or resigned because of their hostile work environment or resigned because of the hostile work environment at the company. Retaliation. The lawsuits uh, variously allege that some employees were the object of different forms of retaliation when they complained about their working conditions. The lawsuit says the former uh, forms of retaliation belittling and degrading the plaintiffs and sub and the plaintiffs and subjecting them to derogatory remarks. One of the plaintiffs alleges that they were demoted and issued a pay cut after raising concerns with their employers after working conditions and then failure to provide to meet various California labor codes. The lawsuit um, variously alleges Unruly failed to provide rest periods, provide meal periods, pay earned wages, pay overtime wages, furnish accurate or itemized waste statements, and maintain accurate records, pay earned commissions, and reimburse businesses for their expenses. Okay. And then it says false imprisonment. The lawsuit alleged former employees were deprived of freedom of movement by threatening legal action. What? Emotional distress. The two lawsuits alleged unruly inflicted emotional distress on the plaintiffs by detaining them in a conference room and making them and making various threats to them. Violations of the Fair Employment and Housing Act. One lawsuit alleges unruly refused to accommodate the plaintiff's request for a different work schedule in order for the plaintiff to care for her son and instead discriminated and retaliated against the plaintiff because of her son's disability or perceived disability. And then unjust enrichment, all of the lawsuits allege the company withheld 40% of employees' commission earnings with the aim of using the money for taxes, but never did. <gasps> That's what Andrew Tate did. They must have learned how to do it from Andrew Tate. That was it. what Andrew Tate did, right? Andrew Tate withheld money for taxes, but that wasn't actually for taxes. Oh, because you have to pay tax on your OnlyFans money. So if you made that 10 million, you still got to pay probably up to 20% on that 10 million, right? So you still have to pay when you do YouTube too. AdSense, AdSense pays me every month. I get paid once a month and I have to remember to take 20% of that and put it away for tax. Okay, because like that, the IRS is going to come for that money. Okay, breach of contract, the lawsuits allege a uh, committed breach of contract and all the lawsuits allege unruly engaged in unlawful, unfair and fraudulent business practices. Rolling Stone have done an article, no woman should be pressured, OnlyFans creators are suing an agency alleging exploitation. In two separate filings, model and lifestyle influencers Sarah Stage and Jessica Cusada are accusing unruly agency of trapping them into exploitative contracts, posting nude and sexual photos out their consent, despite both women telling the agency when they first signed with them that they had no interest in posting such content. The fundamental issue is anyone who wants to produce sexual content is absolutely free to do so, but no woman should be pressured into doing so or shamed for not doing so. That's essentially what unruly did to my clients and is doing to a lot of women. So these are different women from the other article. So Stage signed with them and they gave her a questionnaire they give all of them a questionnaire basically saying like what you're comfortable doing or not doing and she said she was uncomfortable posing nude or posting sexually explicit content while speaking with fans saying she'd like to stick to sexy fitness and tasteful lingerie bikini shots and that she had worked hard creating as a brand as a fitness influencer. Almost immediately after executing the agreement and filling out the, th the survey, defendants began pressuring plaintiff to pose for sexually explicit photographs in blatant disregard of plaintiff's survey responses at its previous conversations with plaintiff regarding the type of content she wanted to post. At a photo shoot stage claims, the photographer pressured her to disrobe and displayed clear favoritism towards the women who were willing to pose nude and produce more sexual content. She goes on to say that a few months later, she discovered that her account manager was posting sexually ex explicit captions and offering to rate a subscriber's penis in oh. exchange for money. This Oh, so they're they're doing the full on Andrew Tate model, which is like the the guys pretend to be them. See, oh, this is don't work with people. Don't let people control your brand. This is a very common model in a lot of sex work. This is exactly how Andrew Tate was a sex worker. Andrew Tate was a sex worker and he would flirt with the men and talk dirty to them and answer their DMs while the girls were sleeping because the girls couldn't obviously be available 24-7. And that is pretty common. A lot of girls' boyfriends or friends answer comments. And this is why nobody touches my shit. If you message me, you're talking to me, okay? I don't like anybody touching my shit. It's mine. I don't want you talking to anybody, pretending to me. Do you want to impersonate me? I get very annoyed. I did not build a brand off a persona. I build a brand off myself. And that's the difference. It's like my brand isn't a character. It's me. So if you pretend to be me, 
that's not okay. If you build a character that's not really you and you're doing all that, that's fine. But like, don't do that. Okay. <sighs> so annoying. Do you talk to people on your OF? I do not talk to people. I answer simple questions like, hey, can I, cause I, I make PBVs. So like, um, if they want a video, I send it to them, but I don't have conversations in my OF. You can't like have a conversation with me on philosophy or something. But if people, um, you know, if people want to buy a video or something, they can message me or if they have a question or if they send a tip, I usually say thank you. You know, that kind of stuff. Like, obviously, I'm not like, I don't ignore people's messages. If they message me like a tip or something, obviously, I'll say hi. But I don't have conversations on my OF and I don't take customs and I don't do any of that stuff. So I make art. I like to think of myself as an erotic artist. I make art. It's very beautiful. I love it. And if you're into that, you can join my OnlyFans. If you're not into that, don't join it. But I am not the kind of sex worker that like pretends to be your girlfriend or something, which is like a whole part of the business. And this is what probably what happened to this fitness. Inst I'm so upset for her. I'm so upset for her. Imagine you're a fitness instructor. You have a complete brand. You do OnlyFans to do, because there's a lot of OnlyFans girls that do fitness. I see them all the time on my OnlyFans page. They're always like, join my OnlyFans. I do fitness and it's fine. But imagine you have a brand and then you find out your management company is like rating dick pics behind closed doors for money. That's another thing I don't do, which is fine. I don't rate dick pics. You know what I mean? Like, again, I think people have to remember that when somebody has a part of your image and this is what big brands do, they do control it. A lot of these food guys, a lot of these models, a lot of these, all of it is a brand to these businesses and they will tell you how to smile, how to dress. They'll figure out a brand look for you. I couldn't do it. I really couldn't do it. I could not. The whole point of YouTube and being an independent content creator was that you could make money doing art that felt like you. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's the way that I prefer to have a relationship with it. You know? So, gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is... It, it, messy isn't the right word, but good God. The lawsuit further alleges that when Stage tried to get out of her contract, Unruly threatened to sue her, mm. continuing to operate her account without permission until she changed her passwords. According to Insider, Unruly Ugh. filed a counterclaim alleging breach of contra contract. They claimed they offered to let her out the contract for a fee, but instead she broadcasted false claims to other models in an effort to persuade them to leave their contract. I mean, this is a similar issue to the one before. So are all these women lying or is it the corporation that's in the wrong? What do you think? Crusader alleges that she too was asked to fill out a branding questionnaire. In her questionnaire, she specified she did not feel comfortable posting nude videos or anywhere where you can see her privates under the clothing and that anything with her in sheer clothing needed to be edited. Yet she says the, the account manager at one point posted a photo where her nipples were visible without her consent and sent subscribers explicit messages without her consent. Ugh. At one point, Crusader alleges and really asked her to travel three hours to meet a VIP subscriber which she could refuse to Whoa. do. Just pimping, isn't it? No, I don't even know if it's pimping, but it's inappropriate. No. You shouldn't be meeting these people in pe person unless you're like you they, just, there's so much danger associated with a lot of this action, you know? I don't think this is good. I don't think this is good. What do you mean? See, this is the dilemma. Is people do think like, "Oh, if I donate enough, like you'll be my friend, or if I give enough money, you'll treat me differently." And I think that's a bad relationship to have with people. And I certainly can't have it with mine. Like, I think that's why I've limited ways for people to participate. Um, and like, even on my Patreon and stuff. But more than that, like, even if you donate, it doesn't mean I owe you anything. I saw FouseyTube. Remember how FouseyTube had this big donor? He would donate like a lot of money. And Fousey was always like, what does this guy want from me? And it feels that way. It feels not good when you have a big donor because you're afraid, like, are they going to want something from me? And in, often it's a yes. Often people don't just give you money for free. And if they do, because they are really supporting the arts or something, that's great. But yeah, this whole like, I'm going to go meet a VIP donor. That sounds super dangerous. I don't like that. Um, you wouldn't make a brand deal or take a brand deal with a company if you feel uh, comfortable with their ethics and stuff. No, I'm not opposed to taking brand deals. Just not brand deals that need my password into my accounts. Not brand deals that need me to post at a certain time. Like I'm very specific with how I do stuff. Like content creators like me, we're not people who rely on brand deals. We're people who rely on audience members and work time. Like we're people who push out content. We're not people who 
rely on brand deals because brand deals need you to work at a certain time. They need you to post in a certain way. They need you to make a video and then review it and then post it. There's so much that goes into brand deals. It's usually not worth it, right? But with this company, they had control of not only her accounts, but their bank accounts. So the girls weren't even getting their money directly to them. Like if I go onto my OnlyFans account, I can just like withdraw my own money and it goes into my account. But with these girls, it goes into somebody else's account and then they pay them the money. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like, because they're not going to meet up and have a cup of tea, are they? It's not what the VIP subscribers got going to want from her. And that's so dangerous. Even Tana Mojo has spoken about how she's had a stalker from OnlyFans. Right. So it'd be so dangerous to, like, try and send someone off to mm -hmm. meet a VIP subscriber. Mm -hmm. Like, unless you know beforehand that, like, it's totally safe. Griseida also alleges that I'm really threatened to sue her when she asked to terminate her contract, wherever we heard that before, <sighs> continued to operate her account without permission. As a result, she became severely emotionally distressed because of defenders' threats and bullying. Unruly said it was their policy to pass along requests from fans, but the company does not pressure nor commit any act that contradict the model's wishes. Hmm. This article then mentions the 2021 Daily Beast article that I just re read out, then said such allegations were echoed by a December 2021 BuzzFeed news piece in which six creators alleged that Unruly, as well as Behave, sold explicit photos of them without the consent and made it difficult for them to exit their contracts. And Rawley told BuzzFeed the, laws, the claims in the lawsuits are broadly stated not supported by any evidence and that it looks forward to disproving their claims through the legal process. So like six there and then like two in this, two in the other one. So that's already 10 people. Do you think like 10 people are just separately lying? No, I wouldn't believe that. There's also a New York Times article called The E-Pimps of OnlyFans. Oh. But unfortunately, it's behind another paywall. Let's see. Two years later, Rosario has an OnlyFans operation more or less routinized when he starts... Managing a new client, he asks for a bank of nude photos and videos. Rosario's ghost writers, known in the industry as chatters, will act as the model in private messages with the customers who pay to talk to her. These chatters work in shifts, responding to incoming messages and reaching out to new subscribers, trying to coax them into buying exclusive pay PPV videos. They tell particular subscribers that a video was recorded just for them. In fact, the same clip might have been sold to dozens of people. The chatters earn a small percentage on most sales, and the rest is split between the agency and the model. The subscribers presumably think they're talking directly to the women in the videos, and it is just uh, the job of the chatter to convincingly manifest the illusion. Their clientele, typically horny, lonely men, make it pretty easy. Our best customers come to us not so much to buy content as they come to us to just to feel a connection. Reads a po uh, Reads uh, a post on Think Expansion's website. This desire, the post ex explains, is a pimp's bread and butter, e or otherwise. Hustling Sims has been an art since the beginning of time. Uh, many creators on the site aren't just posting nudes. The real product is the relationships. Money from subscribers can be trivial compared with the profits earned by selling custom videos, sexing sessions, and otherwise. And look, uh, first of all, I just got to tell you this right now. I would have been an amazing sexter. I am so good at sexting. Holy crap, I'm so good at it. And I only know it because my partners have told me. And I've never done sexting for money. But if I had gone that route, I think I would have made so much money. But I didn't go that route. I'm just good at sexting in general, I think. I think. I think I'm pretty good at it. But also... I don't want to build that kind of relationship with a person. It's so much emotional labor. I think there is a time and a place for grown adults to hire sex workers in a way that is consensual and reasonable and healthy. I think there's a pre predatory side to sex work as in all businesses because, you know, capitalism, right? Where I think they do take advantage of people and I'm not about it. And I think there should be a sort of ethical way to do these things. But at the end of the day, if your God is money, then you will focus on screwing people over for that money. Like Andrew Tate said, he never felt bad ruining men's lives to take every single dollar bill they ever had. You really should listen to Andrew Tate. He is really good at pimping. He's very good at coercion and he's extremely good at convincing women they'd be lost without him. I just think people should have healthy relationships with consumerism and people should be healthy with, when they're having a relationship. Like The problem is people are unhealthy. And when you have an unhealthy population, unhealthy things happen, even if it's church. This, this idea that sex work is what's unhealthy. Have you been to church? Have you been to church? Church is incredibly unhealthy because the people going are unhealthy. The people leading are unhealthy. Schools are unhealthy because the people teaching are unhealthy. The students are unhealthy. Everybody is so unhealthy. It's not what you're doing. It's because you're unhealthy. There are so many good parts to sex work. I love the work that I do. I think I create beautiful pieces of art. 
And I'm very happy with the way that it's going. And I think it's because I have a healthy relationship with it. And I wish everybody could have the relationship I have with it because I'm incredibly fulfilled. It's so nice. I'm so proud of the work that I do there. I feel so giddy when I'm like, oh my God, I think I really created something today. I think I did it today. I think I made something today. That feels really good. I would get pissed if they were like, you need to perform this much. You need to post this much. My audience knows, and I joke with my audience, if you demand that I post a video, I will stop posting. I, okay, you want to talk about demand avoidance? You better let me work and do my thing if you want to see content. If you make a demand, sometimes people show up on my OF and write mean comments. You get blocked. You better be nice to me. If you're not nice to me, I will block you. I'll block you on YouTube and I'll block you otherwise. You are not entitled. Okay? You are not entitled to my body or my time. You're certainly not entitled to my videos. What did Chapel Roan say? I like creating the art. That doesn't mean I have to like the part of it where you think you're entitled to me. Uh, okay, so the, let's see, this is the other thing she posted. The model had almost 6,000 subscribers paying for a monthly fee. Oh, <gasps> that's really good. 6,000 subscribers on OF is insane. Access for her pictures, opportunity to chat with her. Wow. Okay. I'm not going to read this whole thing. There's a document. I'm really complaint for damages. Final. There's a document. This is going to be a lot of legal jargon. I'm not going to be able to read this. I'm sorry. Going back to the Reddit post, the poster says, Spill Sesh, another channel on YouTube, posted about how Austin McBroom was trying to run a similar scam back oh. in January. Many of the girls who spoke out about it said it felt super predatory. And like See? Austin Broom is another example of money, 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 money. All he cared about is money. And look what happened to him. Crash and burn. Liars. All about the money. They have no morals. They have no values. They have no stability. They have no conscientiousness. They have none. They haven't thought about what am I doing with my life? They're just like money, 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 money. Let's see, Chet says there's a massive problem when sex and intimacy gets tangled up in consumerism, though. Consumerism is very much the opposite of consent. I don't think there's actually a difference between consumerism that involves sex and consumerism that doesn't. I think it's all the same at the end of the day. And I think us making it sound like it isn't is missing the point that human beings want, they have a demand, they see a demand, they make a demand through consumerism. Whether it's a demand for food or a demand for sex, it's the same thing to a person building a business. All they want is your attention and your money. They don't care if they're feeding you snacks you don't need or giving you pussy you don't even want to taste. They don't care. They will convince you to buy it. They will convince you you need it. And it's your job to say, I don't need this. And when I want it, I will have it, but I don't need it. It is their job to seduce you and it is your job to say no. I'm going to go meditate in the mountains so I can figure out what I really do need. It's not bad to consume. I love to consume, but consume things that are good for you and consume things when they're necessary and meaningful and reasonable. Just focus on the healthy. These men were trying to insert themselves back into a business where they could finally take a cut, I suppose. So to link this all back to Tana Mojo, Tana being persistent about Alyssa starting an OnlyFans, it could very well be that she probably most likely is getting a cut out of anyone that she successfully mm. refers. I don't see why not, because that's a common enough business model, right? Sign up someone with your link and get like 10% off your next ride or whatever it is. But it's the way that Alyssa told her no and she kept going. And if Tana Mojo was a bloke and was, you know, hassling a girl about becoming a webcam or creating an OnlyFans, then I think people would have reacted to it a bit differently. Unfortunately, because they were going back and forth in dramas, in like the silly high school dramas, some mm. people aren't noticing the aspect of virtual or e-pimping. And it's not like you're trying to convince someone to use your special link at ExpressVPN. You're trying to convince someone to do OnlyFans. And we live in a society. We live in a society, Batman. We live in a patriarchal society by men for men in which there is the illusion of women having sexual and free expression. It is, a, it is an illusion because men get really insecure really fast if a woman is being sexually free. And like I said before, most of the high earners, again, there are outliers, but most of the high earners on OnlyFans already had a pre-existing fan base. So it was easier for them. Whereas a lot of people on there aren't even going to be making minimum wage. And unfortunately, and I don't agree with it, but unfortunately, if people then decided that they wanted to get regular work from then on, it's going, realistically, it's going to be a bit more difficult if you've used your actual, mm. if you've used a stage name, a little bit different, but if you've used your actual name on your OnlyFans and then you want to... 
Yeah, I mean, this happened to Rachel Dolezal, not that we don't have our own issues with Rachel, but Rachel did do OnlyFans and then she became a teacher and then they found out and they had to fire her. So yeah, you can't be a teacher. You can't do things. I have friends in the education bubble and I remember when they were getting hired in their districts, they were told to go on their Facebook accounts and take down all the photos with them drinking, even though it's perfectly normal to have a beer at a barbecue. It was just because there is an obligation to the school district to have a certain reputation. So I think that is something to consider. Look, I wouldn't tell an 18 year old to get an OnlyFans. I would tell an 18 year old and I wouldn't tell an 18 year old to go into the military. OK, those are two things. The military and OnlyFans or sex work are the two things I would tell a person to avoid until they're a little older. I don't think 18 year olds should be signing up for the military. I think that's so unethical and I don't think they should be signing up for sex work. I think that they should have the right to sign up for it, but I wouldn't do it. I am not saying I want the legal government to come in and stop them from doing this. I'm saying from a wisdom perspective, from a discernment perspective, I would wait. Now, I also understand why you would do those things. A lot of people do those things because they're desperate. I think it's bullshit that we don't know. Lots of men join the military at 18 because they're desperate. They are so desperate for security for any sort of income and they think well at least maybe they'll pay for my education or I have to get out of this small town men are just as desperate for men the military is their only fans like you hear girls being desperate to make money so they go on only fans men join the military and I don't think you should be desperate enough to sign up for either but I could understand doing it in a survival situation I think it's a probably good choice between that or homelessness that doesn't mean that the problem is is the fact that they were even in that situation. The problem is they were in the situation in the first place, right? It's true that in a survival situation, I'd much rather you join the military than be homeless. But also, I really wish you weren't homeless so you wouldn't have to do it. Exactly. Chat says both sell their bodies. Both sell their bodies, their reputations. It's, you know, it's a big deal. And I just, I would wish they would wait a little bit while before they did that, you know? working in an office if someone does a background check some companies might be fine with it but some companies probably wouldn't be fine with it it's almost like this is like a multi-level marketing scheme of tada mojos but it's very dark because whilst the creation of OnlyFans did put a lot of the power back into the hands of the creator rather than going with normal porn companies in which people could get exploited there still is a lot of very real risks that come with doing OnlyFans or any kinds of sex work stalkers stalkers are a big one like i said tana mojo even said that she got a stalker you don't get stalkers because you're a sex worker you get stalkers because somebody built a parasocial relationship with you and wanted to be with you whether you're a neighbor or a person you do not get stalkers because you're a content creator you get stalkers because somebody took an interest in you. You can have a stalker as a regular person in the world with a dumbass job, you're not even thinking about it, and boom, someone is following you to your car, to your house, taking pictures of you. Sex work doesn't lead to stalkers. Existing does. All you can do is simply exist and somebody has decided you are now their favorite thing. I don't like the idea of saying sex work is why people get stalkers. I'm not saying she's saying that she seems like a very lovely person. I just want to say that out loud. From her OnlyFans account. A creepy guy, an OnlyFans guy, stalk us for a second and like show up and like um, climb through the mountains to try to get into our backyard and shit like that. When working with normal porn companies, there is the risk of sexual exploitation or being pressured into doing scenes that you're not comfortable with. Like I've heard a few porn stars talk about when they filmed like their first gangbang or bukkake scene, a few of them, I've heard at least like at least a couple say that they filmed these scenes and they felt like they had an out-of-body experience whilst doing it and then they went home and cried. There's a dark side to it. There's a dark side to like everything. You know, life isn't rainbows, but there is there are some real risks that come with sex work. And that's not any shame to the sex workers. The risk comes from people consuming the content who can't fucking control themselves. So for Tana Mojo to be trying to like MLM with other influencers and like try to convince them to come into this in industry that has a lot of risks, it's really dark. And I've seen some people <clears throat> Chad is saying, do you think you have a greater chance of being stalked because of being a content creator? I don't know. I've only I've only had one stalker, but I know people who aren't content creators who've had like three. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just this. It depends on how social you are. 
um, how people bond with you, who takes an interest in you. I don't know. I don't, I mean, if you saw Baby Reindeer, in a way, he didn't even have to be quite famous, but I guess he was sort of in, he did plays and stuff, so I guess he was kind of popular. But she met him at a bar. I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's being a content creator that gives you a higher rate of having a stalker. Maybe a global stalker. Maybe because you're a content creator, you have a higher chance of just having a global stalker, somebody from anywhere in the world. It puts more eyes on you, but it doesn't guarantee how many you'll then have, right? Because like plenty of people can stalk, you know what I mean? You in regular life without you needing to be a content creator. You know what I mean? Um, Did your stalker find you through YouTube, Brit? Yeah, my stalker did find me through YouTube. And they were technically in my local scene, but yeah, they did. And they were really sick. Obviously, stalkers are really sick, right? Like, stalkers are very sick people. So, like, a part of me thinks they, they, they need major help, right? But yeah, I think that that's the thing. Is That's why it's weird when you watch people who aren't even stalkers have an unreasonable relationship with people. And you're like, you need to get your shit together. Because once you're a stalker, you're, like, in this huge mental health, bu- like, loop. You're in a loop of mental insanity in a way. Because, like, to be a stalker is to be mentally unwell, you know? So, yeah, I think realistically, as a content creator, you probably have more chances of a stalker because you're just, like, globally. But, you know, I think it also depends just how much you're socializing or who's taking a fancy to you. I don't know what the numbers would be. Yeah, I just don't know what they would be. Oh, make fun of it or liken her to famous sex traffickers. Why don't... They, I, I, ugh. I don't think she would be trying to maliciously get people sucked into a dark world with lots of risk. I think she's just an idiot who, Mm. when it comes to money, has no moral values. I agree. I think Tana and the Paul brothers and all those people, they just care about the dollar dollar bills. That's all they care about. They just want the bottom line to be fulfilled, including these companies that take advantage of these girls. Andrew Tate just cares about money. Good point. Chat says, even if you're casually dating regularly, you are higher your chances of ending up with a stalker. That's true. How many people have been stalked just from Tinder? So it's really, I think, about your social. Like, how much are you socializing? How much are you putting yourself out there? Yeah, to some extent. But also, that's the consequence. Like, that's the fear. That's the consequence. You know, that's why I don't understand vloggers. Like, I'm kind of shocked people still vlog their neighborhoods and, like, what stores they shop at. Like, I'm kind of still shocked that people do that regularly and, like, talk about their favorite restaurants like I'm kind of like oh I thought we were gonna like move away from that a little bit but people still do it people are always like showing the outside of their building which is interesting I mean obviously everyone's gonna do it at some point it kind of sucks because like no matter where you are someone could you know with GeoGuessr the way it is you know what I mean I don't know I don't I, I saw a TikTok that was like remember the phone book how you would just like volunteer your information the truth is all of our information is always out there And then that's why you just have to be extra safe. Just be extra cautious and then pray to the heavens, you know, that you're only interact with reasonable people. Has no, oh, maybe I should think about this. Just always chases her bag, no matter what it does to other people. I think that's more of a factor rather than her being likened to sex traffickers because you don't want to diminish what some of the really famous sex traffickers have been doing, right? Mm -hmm. I think sex work, should be destigmatized, but as I said before, we live in a patriarchal society. Probably not going to happen anytime soon. Even though you know there are great strides from people who are brave and take leaps, but I feel like it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Especially with how like regressive a lot of people's attitudes mm-hmm. have become in the last few years. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing like more not for religion in the mix, but I'm seeing more religious like weird mindsets than ever on the internet. It's really weird. I thought everyone was about being like edgy and atheist and like you know remember like edgy skepticals. I'm a skeptic. I'm an atheist. What happened to that? Now people are just going back to being really religious, and now it's a fight of oh my old book is better than your old book which is fine if you want to take the metaphors and stories from it that's that's fine just don't like trying to she's so funny bro i agree with her i would love to you know take away the stigma but i think it's going to be a very long time but we've gotten better we have really changed as a people so i think my fingers are crossed for our hope as a humanity but yeah be safe be thoughtful before you choose an industry um you don't have to do things just because people tell you you should do it It's okay to turn down loads of money if it's not within your values. It's okay to take a job that pays less if it is within your values, you know? And infringe other people. It's not the point. It's not the point. You understand what I mean? I feel like people have like regressed in the past few years, especially what I've been seeing. Maybe I'm just like in a weird echo chamber bubble where everyone seems to be getting stupider. What'd she say? 
What she say? Did she say bubble? She did. We're all in a bubble. We all live in bubbles. That's why you got a bubble hop. It's why you got a bubble pop. My point is, sex work comes with danger and it comes with exploitation. And whilst OnlyFans kind of came to like cut out that middleman to make sex workers safer. Exa exactly. OnlyFans was here to cut out the middleman. And then you gave yourself a middleman by going through an agency. Just think about the irony of that. OnlyFans gave you the power to cut the middle middleman out. And then you brought him back into your life by going through an agency. Bro. Doesn't help if you've got people like Tan Mojo or the Unruly Agency trying to like <sighs> swoop in to then exploit and make money off of other women's bodies. Do you see what I mean? It's just a clusterfuck, really. Like trying to pitch something to someone as female empowerment. And it seems it's dressed up nicer because Tana is a woman. So, so it feels... Don't trust it. Don't trust this whole... You know what female empowerment is? Not needing to work with a man. Oh, I said it. At least directly. Female empowerment is not needing to like manipulate your way through the world like a man does, okay? Female empowerment is figuring out how to make money in a way that doesn't make you feel bad, okay? It's like it's coming from a nice place, but it's not because it's like you're trying to dress up something as female empowerment while simultaneously hoping to exploit said woman's body so you can get a cut of the money if that's what she is doing, which I'm pretty sure it is. Because if I could have a sponsorship deal with ExpressVPN back in the day where I got a commission based upon signups, why wouldn't Tana Mojo get a commission based upon signups with her link to the agency which she represents? Of course, allegedly, of course she's getting a cut, come on. It's really dark even for Tana. I wonder if she's even thought about it as I much. I think people forget, like I'm a big fan of erotic art. Like I, the Seattle Erotic Arts Festival comes to mind. Like the reason my OF is probably maybe not as popular as somebody else's or but still does pretty good is because I think it caters to that group. Like I work very hard to curate my OnlyFans to being people who are into erotic art. Erotic art is very specific. You cannot make a demand of the artist. That's why I do it. In erotic art, like that bubble, making a demand of the artist is like telling Picasso what to draw for you. Shut the fuck up and you will take what I give you. You are here to see what I create. This is not a relationship in which you tell me what to do. I create, you consume. This is what I like about erotic art because if you go to like the erotic arts festival, like I have art that I brought to Croatia with me. It's in, you know, our little storage unit. It's like, this art has stayed with me. I spent money on this. I brought it with me. It says something to me. Whatever, whoever this artist was that created this art, it spoke to me. That's what I think of. That's my goal with my OnlyFans as I get older is just using the platform to create erotic art in a way that gets it out to customers. You know what I mean? And allows me to be like, I really like what I made. I really like what I created. It's really like if I just want to be proud of the pieces that I create. And it feels like a lot of these people can't do that because they have to get them out at a certain time or they have to work a certain amount of days. Like, how are you going to make art on a schedule? But then for a lot of people, sex work is an art. It's just like performing very quickly to make fast money. It is much better to do sex work as an art form, in my opinion. You're actually proud of what you do. You make less money, but you do make money. And it's it's good enough, guys. It's good money. But you do have to make a platform somewhere else. Like you have to have an OnlyFans or a YouTube channel or something that brings people into your OnlyFans. And that's where people don't know how to market themselves. Look, if Lean B. Patty started an OnlyFans, she would make a killing. And she wouldn't even have to do much. If she just posed in a bikini and posed muscle like video, she would make a killing. If she just posted videos of her squeezing watermelons with her thighs, she would literally make a killing because she has 4 million people on Instagram. If just 100,000 of those people bought her OnlyFans for 20 bucks, boom. What are we even talking about here? Watch as me or some of these people have, you know? And then again, when it comes to something like this, the exploitation or the possible exploitation of other women's bodies so that you can be financially compensated from it. Does Tanamoto's intent matter? Does it matter? Where, like, of course it does matter a little bit more realistically. Cause you I think it matters what Tana's in, um, intention is, of course, but also does Tana, is Tana gonna learn from this situation? Cause that's the next question. Does Tana learn from her mistakes at a rate that's fast enough to trust her with business in the future? I'd say probably not. You would hope that like she's not deliberately trying to be a dark pimp. 
to like deliberately affect someone's life negatively of course of course not but whether she is being a dark pimp or whether she's just trying to be money hungry all these bitches out here trying to be a playmate but i want to be hugh hefner if the outcome is the same does the intent matter a lot what matters more outcome or intent i'm also just going to read out because i just saw this quickly a mm -hmm. post someone made oh. on the reddit star love online of agencies and pimping i don't think you understand how it's serious this is yes i'm using the word pimping because that's exactly what this is as a former sex worker i've seen this all the time young girls being promised a life of luxury never had to worry about bills 500k a month and the famous line of you don't even have to show anything agencies and true 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 that is true actually that is the truth of it is like this promise of like i'm making this much money without showing anything i'm like that can't be true. And if it is, like, how are you tricking people to sign up for it? That's a great point. Influencers like Tana, Austin Broom, Little Pump, and many more use these tactics to get other young, naive girls to sign contracts they don't fully understand. I mean, that does back up what we saw in that article about even the lawyer was saying, yeah, it's so convoluted and for, like, what reason? So, like, that. I hate, side topic, not so serious, I hate legal speaking in legal jargon. Just, like, say what you mean, say it with your chest, bruv. Imagine me writing a contract, <laughs> imagine me writing a contract in front of him, being like, just fucking speak properly. <laughs> Instead of being like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, imagine a contract being like, blah, blah, blah. Be serious. Be for real. Mm. They don't fully understand. And you can say, if that was their decision, that's on them. And then I really have nothing to say to that other than I really hope you're not put into a position where you'll promise so much you end up being a legally, an illegally binding, exploitative contract. Damn, chat says, I think uh, Tana is going to Logan Paul it and blame it on the managers. Man, they all belong together, bro. I'm telling you. Obviously, this isn't the same thing, but it's kind of similar because we were calling it an MLM and I've done a video about how I was in, I call it a sales cult, which is, cults doing a lot of heavy lifting there. A bit of an exaggeration. I don't exaggerate that much though. Like, having to wake up really early and like chant things at each other and um, oh. having managers talk about like, how you should cut off anyone who is negative about your job. Like that's oh. a cold tactic. It's just like a, well, it's not kind of severe because I lost money. Anyway, and I've been in an MLM. And I was young and stupid and I just Did I tell you guys my LMM story? MLM story? Multi-layered, what is it? Marketing? I was working at In-N-Out and I was like freshly out of high school. I was like 18, 19. I was working multiple jobs and I was working at In-N-Out and this woman, and I was known for being on the cash register. I was like really bubbly and friendly and silly and very like singy. And I would just like sing at the register all day and be very fucking neurodivergent. And this woman comes in to my in and out hands me a business card and said, you would be great at my company. I would love to work with you. And I said, oh my God, that's so dope. What? I asked my mom, like a sweet fucking 19 year old virgin, neurodivergent to come with me to the meeting because I had an intuition about it that I didn't, I wasn't feeling good about it. And I said, can you come with me into this meeting? And my mom was like, yeah. So my mom comes with me into this meeting. We sit there and we're listening to them pitch us the story. It's us and like 30 other people. And right away, my mom is like, this is bullshit. Whatever this is, it's bullshit. I was like, yeah, something about this feels like bullshit, bro. And we were sitting there and my mom and I were like, mm, and we were throwing each other looks. And um, basically it was, um, what's that one company? What's that one company everyone ends up doing at some point, but it's just like a bullshit company. Anyways, it was basically one of those. Okay. And my mom and I knew, and the lady came up. She goes, oh, I'm so glad you came, Brittany. What do you think? And I was like, I think I'm going to go in a different direction. And my mom and I left and we laughed and we were like, I can't believe she just tried to pull me into this bullshit. Stop it right now. Actually, funny. You said Mary Kay. You know, my mom used to be a Mary Kay girl. She won a car, a ring. She actually met Mary Kay herself. My mom made a killing in the 80s with Mary Kay. I also did Avon at one point, which is so funny. And all of those things are just like, they're so fun, but they don't make you money the way they promise you. No, it was, um, there was one, uh, my mom still has a diamond ring. She won from Mary Kay Cosmetics. What is the one? There was one that my brother fell for, which I laughed so hard at him. I was like, I can't believe you fell for this. There was, there was a specific one Oh, why can't I think of the name? Shoot, I don't know. But he fell for it. And we were, we laughed. We did, we make fun of him. We're like, I can't believe, we told you it was bullshit. But he was like, nah, bro, I got this. I know what to do. Like, I got it. I was like, you don't got it. It's bullshit. Anyways, we were laughing. We were laughing. So that's my story. It's interesting who falls for things and who doesn't. What was the product? Good question. Maybe health foods? It was, when I hear the name, I know it, but I can't imagine it right now. I think it was health foods or something like that. But either way, it doesn't matter. The point is, it's interesting that I didn't fall for it, but my brother did. Tell me that's not funny. Right? Like, isn't that funny? Like, why? 
man, okay, the fact that you guys have named like 10 different companies and I, they're none of these is Amway. Thank you. Discord said it. Amway. It was Amway. Thank you. What does Amway sell? Is it food? What is it? Yes. Discord knew it. Amway. I can't believe how many companies y'all just named and I've never even heard of some of these. I'm shook to my core. It was Amway. He fell for Amway and I just didn't get why he did. And then he, oh, you know how it is with boys. They're just like, oh, you don't know. I know. I could make money doing this. He did not make money doing it. Okay. He bought a bunch of Amway, never sold any of it. <sighs> Anyways. All right. <sighs> Anyways. Okay. Let's finish out this video. It's almost my bedtime. Wanted to make a lot of money without putting the work in. I was really young, by the way, like 22, I think. And I got sold the idea of an MLM from someone else who was in an MLM uh, and a point in my life where I was a bit vulnerable because I was so broke and I couldn't just get a normal office job. I was fed up of working in bars and they really sell you on this. All you have to do is X, Y, Z and then you're going to be seeing like residual income and then you're going to be seeing passive income. Yep. So when people are like, oh, well, it's your fault, it's your decision, that's on them. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, but things don't happen in a vacuum and it's nice to have a little bit of understanding. And if they're going after young girls who are like as young as 21, I would assume like as young as 21 because you could legally drink then. And they're giving them some really convoluted contract. Oh my God, wait, to make this even funnier chat, you said someone sees potential in a man once and they think they're all Wolf of Wall Street. My brother that fell for Amway, literally, I like loves Wolf of Wall Street, loves Leo and all those movies idealizes and I'm like y'all need to stop putting like shitty men on pedestals and realize it's not about making money I swear some people's brains are rotten and just think if I make the money it's okay it's worth it if I make money it's not worth it these people went to prison it is not worth it the money isn't worth it J that's why I think people forgive Andrew Tate I literally think people forgive Andrew Tate because he makes money and I just want us to process that People forgive Trump because he, quote, makes money. That is what we need to literally, this is why I say, you want to talk about spiritual bankruptcy? You are allowing people to get away with bullshit because they made money. Making money doesn't mean it worked. Making money was just a product of taking advantage of people. Well, I have sympathy for them anyway. These agencies prey on younger girls and so did Tana. If Tana Tree wanted to help Alyssa and other girls get into OF, she would have given them tips on how to manage their own accounts and not through a third party agency. Tana's mm -hmm. Angels is run by Unruly Agency, not Tana herself. Unruly Agency has nine lawsuits against them right now for not paying their models, posting photos, models, like I said, uh, so much more. Tana only cares about making money off of young professional girls who think this is an easy industry to get into. This is a common tactic real pimps use to recruit more girls. They use women to convince these girls so they feel safer. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Tana is not managing these girls, she is the face. These girls are signed to an agency full of men who do not give a if they live or die and that's the god's honest truth don't care if it sounds harsh don't sound after me but i'm english i'm basically billy butcher from the boys whose english accent is not amazing by the way you would think after so much conversation about the exploitation of the porn sex work industry that would be able to call this out from mile away or at least acknowledge that this is messed up but it's okay if it's your fave right this is the last show with me or tana you need to stop making excuses that she was probably just trying to help her friend out stop trying to make yourself feel better i don't even think you believe what you're saying i think this is really sick and inexcusable and then the top comment said when she said you'll be buying a house and a lambo in six months i was shocked that's such a classic manipulation tactic and someone said it's giving mlm pisses Damn. me off how tana tries to pull the it's empowering card it might be for you when you're already so rich and posting instagram outtakes with stupid captions on of not for the younger naive girls signing big contracts and looking for a main source of income from it. People often talk about destigmatizing sex work, but that has always meant taking the lives and safety of workers seriously. It does not mean brushing the abuse that they suffer under the rug that directly goes against the initial goal. We shouldn't shame women, many of whom go into the industry as a last resort, but we can't pretend that the industry doesn't prey on women and abuse them. All of the good examples people use is 0.005% of the industry. Okay, hold on. Chad says Tana is evil. Let me tell you, in a philosophy sense, philosophically, Tana is closer to evil than her joy. I do think Tana... And I don't mean evil, like, like, I don't think people are evil in the way we think of evil. I think people are, are on, they're on a journey of being separated from their discernment, from their wisdom, from their balance, from their joy. And I think Tana is on a journey and this is a part of her journey, but this is the test for her to learn from the mistake. We have given as a society, as a YouTube community, I have given, especially like Logan Paul, so many chances to learn from his mistakes. And the man cannot learn because he's already decided this is what's moral, right? 
Chat says, I think Tana has been in Hollywood for too long and thinks this is normal behavior. I think you're right, Taylor. I think you're right. I think Tana has been in the bubble for so long that she thinks everything works this way in the bubble. But this is a capitalistic bubble. This is a very specific bubble. Logan and all those people are symptoms of the system. Logan and Tana are symptoms. They see how other adults are doing it and they mimic the other adults and now they grow to be those next adults. And that's just how it's going to work. So again, remember, remember that the same people that worship Logan Paul and rich people and Andrew Tate, I will get criticism, especially from boy bubbles who say, oh, look at Britney's channel. She's not making any money. She's failing. She gets like no views. And yet I bet I make more than all of you. Because again, I do not prioritize money over my morals, but I still got to pay my bills like everybody else. And the way that I choose to do it is slow but steady and I make more than enough money to be stable. But these boys who don't count my life as good enough because it's not millions of dollars are willing to side with shitty people with bad morals because at least they're rich. And I'm saying that's not good. And I'm saying that's bad. But it's only bad because my values say it is, not because I live in some objective world where that's the way it has to be. So remember every day when you're a school teacher making 45K or 65K if you're lucky, remember that as long as you're living within your values, making millions of dollars isn't, isn't all it cracks up to be. It isn't all it seems. Even being born into generational wealth it doesn't come free. You have obligations to that family. You have to show up. I mean, look at the princess Di. Look at the royal family. Is that the life you want? That's not the life I want. I don't want that life. You have to pick and choose what life you think you're, you know, oh, I wish that was my life and I'm glamorizing it and the grass is always greener. Is the grass always greener or is there just more money? Because I swear to God, you can make plenty of money being a decent person and, and live a pretty good life. You know, look at, look at um, Tim Waltz. What, Waltz, Waltz. I'm still learning how to say his name. Our lovely, our lovely VP running mate for Kamala Harris. Look at him. No investments, living off pensions. Nice, nice family. Waltz, Waltz. Is that how I say his name? Waltz. His child making me cry this weekend about how much he loves his dad. Just like, what a sweet, wholesome man. I would rather be him any day of the week than a Logan Paul or an Andrew Tate. OF tends to be a last resort for so many too. Many influencers only open an OF when views are down to keep rich. She must have seen Alyssa fall off a bit and decide it's a good time to use a 500k and a Lambo to guilt her into it, which is so not okay regardless whether she was coked up asking about it. The shit I've said drunk alone should never be taken literally. So why would you run with something that someone said on drugs? I agree. Anyway, it's all very dark. I'd like to hear you guys' opinion on this. And it's definitely not something that Tana could be like, oh, I was young, naive and impressionable. I didn't really know like what I was doing. She can't really behind hide behind that for this one. Of course, the moment- I think she could say at most, this is the last time I'm gonna fuck up in this way. And I'd really like this to be the last time because yeah, this is obviously in my mind a fuck up, right? I think she is 25. I think we've all done dumb things at 25, but I think that Tana has had enough opportunities to learn a life lesson. She needs to learn it at this point, and I don't think anyone should work with her until she does. I think she's just not a safe judge of character on who is safe to work with, and I think that's important to pay attention to. When some a group of people try to take back power for themselves, there's just always another group of people waiting to exploit that somehow. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. <sighs> Great video, on Instagram. Great video. We love to see it. I'm going to subscribe to this girl. I've never watched her before. Elsie. Elsie. I'm going to share her video in the chat so you guys can check her out. Great video. I think she made some really solid points and I agree with her. I think there's definitely these women are victims. And it's disappointing. And maybe the employees too who, were, who weren't named, they could have been also men, women, whoever, non-binary. I don't care. Obviously, this is not okay. I don't know if it's called, I don't know if it's traditional pimping, but I would say that it's pretty bad either way. Yeah. It's pronounced LZ, LZ, LZ. Okay, thank you. LZ. We love her. She's our new best friend. Okay, love that. I've been nothing but
bliss So what's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool